I've always been a little bit nervous, a little bit cautious about having uh, sermons uh, when I, when I preach uh, recorded. One of the reasons for that is uh, that I, I've, I've seen online on Twitter and Facebook people take little snippets of something that somebody said uh, out of context uh, to create an impression either to use what that person has said out of context to support their own position or to use it as ammunition to attack them. I, I remember uh, one occasion uh, somebody had, had included a clip from a sermon that I'd I'd done, and uh, whilst it wasn't a particularly um, terrible example, it wasn't going to really get me into too much hot water. I was aware that the way that the clip came across just didn't give justice to the context of what I'd said and what I'd gone on to say. Uh, in fact, it, it made uh, what was in fact a, a little aside, like the main point. Now, there's always the risk when I'm recording something like this that you could go through, you could edit it, please don't. You could snip out a bit of what I'm saying. But at least I'm intentionally uh, speaking, knowing that it's going to be uh, recorded and put out there, and that helps me think about what I'm going to say and what, what I'm not going to say in, in, this, in this video. And thinking about how people today make use of video and audio recordings and take snippets out of them, or how they will even take a, a quote in writing and, and tweet it without any uh, context, Thinking about those things um, helps us to think a bit about how we approach communicating God's Word. In our last video, I said that um, I was speaking uh, for the particular church that I'm, I'm part of. I said that we prefer to uh, use what we call expository preaching and teaching. Uh, by which we mean that we work systematically through books of the Bible with the hope that we will cover as much of the Bible as possible over a period of, of time. That uh, we will work through the book chapter by chapter, verse by verse, in effect, just looking and before we try to apply anything to people's lives, making sure that we understand what it's saying, uh, what the storyline is in, in, in a narrative. Uh, what the big idea is in in a poem, uh, the the way that a, a bit of logic or reasoning builds up in one of Paul's letters. That's the the sorts of things that we do, and we we do our exegesis to find out those things so that we can bring them out. That's what an exposition is. We um, expose. We bring out of. Ex Position and exegesis come from uh, the Greek um, preposition uh, ex, out of, uh, in the same way that you exit a building. Uh, the opposite of, of exegesis and exposition is eisegesis, and we might even talk about eisposition. Um, the Greek word eis is to... Um, read into something. We'll talk about the dangers of that uh, another time. Uh, but what I mainly wanted to do today was to talk a bit more about what expository teaching is uh, and, and why uh, we use that. And, 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 I, and I want to again say that this is relevant whether or not you um, are or are about to get involved in preaching and teaching from the front in church. Uh, if you are uh, leading a, a small group, a Bible study group, then you will want to uh, take the same approach of working uh, for a book of the Bible systematically. If you are wanting to respond to people in one-to-one -one counsel, I want to suggest that at least having that in the background is helpful, uh, and that in fact it might affect how we give biblical counsel to people. 
and that's something maybe uh, for discussion uh, when you get a chance with others. And if you are wanting to know how we communicate and how we understand God's word better because you're involved in leading worship, because you've got a gift of prophecy, you want that, uh, that background there. Again, that sense of the background from which we work when we prophesy, when we um, evangelize, when we lead worship, when we share testimony, all those things. Um, that background matters because it will help us to think about the platform from which we act, from which we speak into people's lives. So one of the reasons why I believe that expository teaching is the right method that should be the, the default, uh, the background to everything else we do, is because of that same danger with scripture, as I've talked about with what we say, uh, when it is taken out of context, uh, that um, just as you can take a snippet of of me speaking uh, without any background, with any without any context of what I said before, what I said after, uh, often without the sense of the the reason for why I said it. That's another type of context. Um, often without the sense of the tone in it. Often without a awareness of the audience that I might have been speaking to. Now, when you, you know that when that happens, if, if, if you do that to me, if I do that to you, then it distorts, as we talked about before, uh, what I'm saying. It, it prevents good communication. It can even lead to people hearing the opposite uh, of what is intended. And, and it misuses our words because they're not being used for their original intended purpose. We don't want to do that with God and his word. Now, I believe that scripture is not just a word about God. It, it, it's not just that it contains God's word. I believe that scripture is God's word. So this is the primary way in which God speaks to us. Uh, using human writers inspired by the Holy Spirit to write these things down, it is God who is talking to us when we open the Bible. And so I don't want to take his words, rip them out of context, and so end up distorting them and, and misusing them. And we do that, I think, one way we do that is, is, is when we start and say, here's the topic I want to talk about, uh, whether that is about um, how we care for the environment, uh, how we steward our money and how we give, um, issues around sexuality and gender issues around um, care for the poor, issues around... Um, the language that we use, uh, issues around life and death, abortion and euthanasia, all those kinds of things. Any of the, the hot topics that we could, could touch, um, uh, whether there's such a thing as a just war or whether we should be pacifists, all the kind of you know, red button things that people want you to talk about, that they love to hear um, messages about in church. If we start with the topic, then the risk is that we start trawling through the Bible to find the quotes, the statements, the verses, even the passages that seem to fit with the message that we want to bring. We read our message into the text. Uh, and that stops us from asking, is that what that bit of the Bible in context was meant to be telling us? Is that what it's there for? And that doesn't mean to say uh, that what we are sharing is wrong in terms of we may actually be teaching, instructing, counselling the right things, uh, but we might be relying on the wrong Bible passages. And so silencing them, uh, preventing them from speaking on the things that they are meant to speak, and, and actually missing uh, the, the, the big argument that Scripture does give for those things. 
Uh, so that's one way that we can do that. Uh, another way is, I think, when we start with just one verse or even a selection of verses from across the Bible and we, we try to teach, we try to speak on them, we end up just uh, getting it all the wrong way around. Uh, here's an example. I, I was just reading a, a blog article the other day. Um, uh, ask the question, you know the, the verse, be still and know that I am God. And the author asked the question, who is God actually speaking to? Who is it that is meant to be still and know that I am, I am God? Uh, is it the believer? Is it a, a call to be quiet? as a Christian and, and not to do anything and to meditate and, and you know there is a good case for being still for meditating for being patient for waiting for God or, or is it a challenge to the nations that rage against God well look it up and find out decide what you you think that that was the question that he threw out uh, I've um, been working on one of our other video series on uh, through Luke's gospel recently and, and one of the things I've picked up on is that when Jesus talks about not hiding a light under a, a bucket or a bushel or a, or a bowl, but having it up where it can shine, uh, that we tend to think of that primarily as letting the light of our witness shine out. But when you look at the, the context, it, it seems to be as much about how God's light will uh, no doubt about it, no ifs, no buts, no questions, no challenging, will expose the truth about what is hidden in all of our lives. Uh, so a slightly different perspective. And again, that's not to say that there isn't a place, uh, that it isn't important that we let our light shine. And in fact, there are other scriptures, other, even nothing other uses of, of that, that particular image that would point us in that direction. No, but the risk is that we lose uh, the point that Jesus is making um, if we don't look carefully at the context. So the dangers that we read what we want to say into what the Bible is saying, uh, losing what it is actually saying, are, are that we take a verse and we lose its context and again, uh, distort it and lose its intended meaning. So what does that mean for us as Bible communicators? Well, first of all, I, I think it, it means once again that we need to know the whole story. Uh, we need to know how the particular Bible passage whether it's a few verses or a few chapters or something in between, or even a whole book of the Bible. Um, fun to do a, a, a teaching session on a whole book of the Bible, isn't it? Unless it's Jude or Free John. Uh, I, I did. Um, I have done Isaiah in about three or four uh, sermons. That was that was quite a challenge. Uh, we're getting off subject anyway. When. We are thinking about how we approach scripture to communicate it. We ourselves need to know the whole story and to know where that scripture fits in the story. That's the first thing we need to, to know. Then secondly, we need to be looking at where it fits in the, the specific book of the Bible that we are looking at and then finally we need to be reading a whole section of scripture and as we prepare as we study as we get ready to communicate we need to be seeing how uh, the particular point that we might be focusing in on how scripture builds up to it and how scripture follows through on it, how scripture applies it. 
Uh, and one of the things uh, we'll spend a bit of time on in future videos is, is looking at a bit more detail at some tools that can help us in our preparation to make sure uh, we do that. Uh, but, but first of all, uh, big lesson from this week, context is king. Don't take God out of context. Um, we are going to be thinking in future sessions, not just about the context of scripture, uh, but the context in terms of uh, what we are, uh, the people we are preaching to. Uh, there is also, uh, just as a side point, there's the context, not just of the text, but the context of the history, the environment in which scripture was written in. Uh, but we're also going to be looking at the context. Who are the people that we are speaking to? How do we contextualize for them? And I also believe that there is the context of our own lives as preachers, as teachers, as communicators, that before uh, we can really exegete God's word, exegete the congregation, we need to exegete our own lives as well and understand what is going on there. Uh, but those are for future sessions. Uh, thanks for joining in.